What's up everybody, this is Steve with Steve Sanctuary. I wanna do another video today. What I wanna show off, I may have to do one at a time. Well, let's see what we can do here. I just got called out for this one. This is a juvenile water moccasin here. And then this is a copperhead. It's a couple of years old probably. And you see both of them. First of all, this one's flattening his body out to make himself look bigger. Um, that's something I wanna show. Um, another thing I wanna clarify again, because I get this every year, they, uh, people ask me all the time if water moccasins or copperheads or whatever smell like cucumbers. They do give off a musk, but it does not smell like cucumbers to me. What I want to say is, uh, you know how everybody tastes things differently and smells things differently? Some people like certain smells or tastes and they don't, and then others don't. It's kind of like that with snakes. They do give off a musk, but it may or may not smell like cucumbers or watermelons or whatever to, to you. May, may smell like that to you, it may not. It does not smell like that to me, but they do have a distinctive musk that they give off as a defense to scout their predators. Now, what I wanted to show is a side-by-side -side comparison. If you can zoom in a little bit, Emerald. Um, if you can show the side-by-side -side comparison of these, this copperhead here does have the class, oh, look, they're twisting their tails up. That's kind of cute. Oh, buddy. All right, so this copperhead, oh, he's rattling his tail. They don't have rattles, but they do rattle their tails against things to sound like rattlesnakes, to mimic venomous snakes, or other venomous snakes. Uh, both of these are venomous, so I do have my bite-proof gloves. You can see him rattle on his tail there. Uh, so this copperhead does have the classic Hershey kiss pattern on the side. And if you look at it from the top, it does look like an hourglass. You cannot always go by that. I've had a lot of friends lately find some with stripes. So there are anomalies out there. Um, so you can, you can kind of use that as a general rule, but like I said, you can't always go by that. Uh, if you look at the water moccasin, stop it, buddy. I'm gonna have to put you back. You gotta just chill out for a minute. Chill out for a minute. The water moccasin, to me, it, they have more jagged lines that go down the side. They're not as clean, they're not as smooth, they're more jagged. They look almost kind of, to me, like, like, like little lightning bolts going down the side. Uh, they're more jagged, they don't have that smooth, uh, uh, smooth edges. Um, now this juvenile water moccasin, what I want to talk about, a lot of people get these confused with copperheads because if you notice, this guy's got like lighter tones. He's not real dark. When water moccasins, and they're also known as cottonmouths, are born, they, they do have a lighter two-tone color. They, they're not real dark, but as they get older, most of the time they get a lot darker and you may or may not be able to see those lines as much and those patterns. But that's why I wanted to compare these guys. Come here, buddy. I'm going to try to show you off again is if you look, they're both, they both have a lighter two-tone color. Um, and if you notice, this one's, a, this one's pretty light. Um, this water moccasin is pretty light, but as he gets older, like I said, he's gonna get a lot darker. But this is why a lot of people get the water moccasins confused with the copperheads because of their colors. But if you notice the patterns side by side, you can tell the patterns are a lot different, a lot different. Um, now the, the copperheads, they're gonna keep that two-tone brown color their whole lives. Um, they're not gonna get, they're not gonna darken up. The only thing that's gonna get darker, come here, stop, buddy. The only thing that's gonna get darker on both of these, when they're born, they do have a lime green or a yellowish tip on their tail, and they use that as a caudal lure, C-A-U-D-A-L. What they do is they camouflage themselves, they stick the tip of the tail up, and they wave it back and forth to attract frogs and lizards. When the frogs and lizards come by, because they think that's a worm, then the snake will get those. The water moccasins and the copperheads both have that. These are getting a little older, so they're starting to lose those. The copperheads, uh, the tip on his tail is almost completely gone. You can see a little slight, slight fade to a yellow on it. The water moccasin or cottonmouth has still got that lighter tip on the, on the tail. And uh, But I wanted to compare these side by side so you guys can see the patterns and the colors side by side. And again, this is why a lot of people get them confused. Like I said, with the water moccasin being lighter when they're born, um, that's why a lot of people get them confused. But uh, again, I want to do another video on these side by side, as you can see them. They do have that quote unquote diamond or triangle shaped head uh, because their venom glands are in their jaw. But the, the rat snakes, the non-venomous water snakes that we have, we have three non-venomous water snakes here in Louisiana or in our part of Louisiana. And then the rat snakes will both flatten their heads out to the diamond or triangle shape. That's why you can't go by the head shape. Um, and also when copperheads and water moccasins are born, they are, they are fully venomous when they're born. The babies are not more venomous than their adult counterparts. 
um, you have to think that a bigger snake has got bigger fangs and bigger venom glands, so they can inject more venom in one bite. Um, and a, a larger snake also knows that you're too big to eat, so he may or may not inject venom. Uh, the babies do, um, but anyway, like I said, the babies are not more venomous than their adult counterparts, but they are venomous from birth. Uh, so you do have to be careful with those. Um, but these, this copperhead I got called out for a couple of days ago, this water moccasin we just got today. Uh, so I wanted to do a quick video on those, showing those off. These are both the Kistradon. Um, you have a, a, a Kistradon Contortrix and a Kistradon Piscivorus. Uh, so both of these are in the same family. And this is something else. There are actually cotton heads out there. You can actually breed water moccasins and co copperheads together to get a cotton head. Uh, it's only, so far it's only been done, I think it was at a zoo, I don't want to say a lab, but it was done at I believe a zoo, so it was in a controlled environment. I don't think there's any been, been any reports of these uh, breeding in the wild together, uh, but you can get the cotton heads, you can mix these together. Uh, but this is Stephen with Steve Snakes, where I, like I said, I want to do another video comparing the water moccasins and the copperheads. And uh, so, and then the other thing I just want to tell you guys, we do have our moccasin misfit shirt. So make sure you go grab one of those. You, you can email us or you can call us or you can go to Anchor Merchandising and the Snakesbury page on Anchor Merchandising and get you a moccasin misfit shirt from Steve Snakesbury. But anyway, this is Steve and we'll see you guys later.